that is knowledge and love. And indeed, the knowledge of the truth. But the Word of God says something very important here. Even if I have all the revelation from God and the prophecy, and I know all things, but I do not have love, I am nothing. Even if I am full in the Spirit of God and I am speaking in the tongues, not of people, but the tongues of angels, but I do not love, I am nothing. I am like an empty vessel, like an, uh, a can with no insulation, as I say. But if through faith, and with all the knowledge of the world, I am bringing all my possessions and even my life, I sacrifice them in front of God. My service, my possessions, all the things in my life, but I do not have love. Then there will be no benefit for me. Therefore, there's a great trap uh, in the in the Christian's uh, way of life is knowledge. I know the gospel of God, and I've heard some say, I know uh, the word of God by heart, all of it. May God protect us from that kind of boasting, though, because knowledge, if someone thinks that he knows, he firstly needs to understand that he knows nothing because he thinks he knows. There's a difference between thinking that you know something and boasting about it, and there's a difference between knowing and because I do know, I remain uh, faith uh, humble. Because it is not possible for anyone to know and then boast. And the Word of God confirms it plainly. The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. In other words, what is God trying to tell us through these verses? And it is very important what He's trying to tell us. What is your opinion about yourself? My God protect us indeed. What is the opinion you have for yourself? And the great sin that the Christian uh, nations fall under. It is the making no mistake, just like the Pope uh, used to say. And it is a creed now that the Pope is never wrong. Making no mistakes. Like the pastor in the church of Laodicea. I am now rich, he says, and I know all things now. I need no one else. Pay attention to this. I need no one And God says, do you understand that you are nothing? You are zero. And additionally, the word of God says that if any one of you is comparing, but pay attention to it, comparing himself, but with the wisdom of boasting and tries to see himself higher than his brother, saying that I'm higher and he's lower. And if anyone compares himself with his brother in that way, then in the eyes of God, he is a foolish person indeed. He is a foolish person. He doesn't understand. He or she. It is very important, therefore, my dear brethren, for us to know that knowledge... is making uh, the person prone to boasting. And I want to see it how uh, exactly as the Word of God confirms it through uh, Apostle James. As he says, 
if there's any one of you in the midst of you who is wise, do you understand what it means for what wisdom means? He knows and he continues on knowing about God. He has entered into the pathway of the revelation of God. Or he has, he, he is able and God has revealed uh, his word to him. That person, therefore, is under a great danger. A great danger he hasn't understood yet. Why? Because if he doesn't keep himself with every care, his own heart, if he doesn't keep it, and in his heart, because of the wisdom, because he has wisdom and knowledge and now he puffs up and he goes into bitterness he says the word of god says in james chapter 3 and verse 14 but if you have a bitter envy and selfish ambition it is he is then a per if he is a person who is aggravated easily he can quarrel only because of his boasting that is why he's aggravated easily that is why he's bitter his envy, his self, he has selfish ambition. Let him do not boast because he is denying the truth. The complete knowledge, his understanding at the end, it's not from the Father of Lights coming down on him. Do you now understand what I'm talking about? That wisdom, such wisdom, says in verse 15, does not come down from heaven. And it's not given once, it's continuous. We are continuously receiving wisdom because indeed the pastor in the church of Laodicea was uh, blessed until he boasted and he became worse of all, the worst of all. And God took him out of nothing and was made a pastor he was transformed into a pastor of the church, a great church, and he thought that he did it himself. It was his doing? No. My dear brethren, without Jesus Christ, we're not able to do anything. And let us never forget it. All that is good, all good deeds in your life and gifts from God are only given from God down to us from the Father of lights. There's nothing that you have there's nothing that you have that is not given to you. We have nothing that is good. Whatever good there is in your life, it is given from God. Let us therefore do not act as if it is our own. But remember that a thousand talents were given to that servant because he showed compassion to the servant that asked for, for his debt to be removed. Or rather, the debt to be delayed. And he was made, he was free right after that. Not only he was free of the debt, but he was free as a man. He wasn't a servant anymore. And because he didn't show love to his fellow brother, he got, he gained, rather, he gave back the talents that he owed. And the question is, can God bring back the debt that you owed? The answer is yes. He did bring it back to, on him. And for him to help him out, to come back to his senses and repent, he gave him up to the tormentors. Do you understand what it means for you to be given up to the tormentors because of God? God who is good, but because he is faithful, he is, has to send you the tormentors so that you may come back to your senses. That is the message today. Indeed, in the church, we all know uh, many things and we have the knowledge. The things that we know, people outside this church do not know about them, about the rebirth and the baptizing in the Spirit, the baptizing through the water, uh, the coming of Christ. They don't know. People don't know about these things. We know about them now. And who taught us? 
No person indeed. I remember up until the moment I was uh, reborn, I had the Bible in my uh, house. And, and I was, uh, I, I, I told my wife that you start talking as reading uh, about Revelation because uh, I thought that it was a, a nice book. I thought that it was wise saying these things. And I'm saying these things in front of the eyes of God. I will take the word of God. And because I saw that the uh, Bible was New and Old Testament, because I loved reading, and I've read about many things, and I was boasting about there is no book, there's nothing written that I haven't touched or saw. And I was studying and reading hours and hours. But when I took in my hands, not the Word of God, I was talking I was talking about the small Bible that they gave me in the army. And I started from the, uh, Ma the Gospel according to Matthew, and I would go up to the second chapter, and I would fall asleep. It was just the New Testament back then, by the way. And it was weird, wasn't it? I was falling fast asleep. That is what the Word of God is talking about. To the person that the enemy, as he is unfaithful, he is blinding their mindset so that the light of God may not reach him. The light of the gospel. And now the, the enemy set, was sending to me uh, the spirit of sleep and I was sleeping away. Yes, the person of God who was not reborn yet. I wasn't reborn yet. I didn't know anything yet. And some people were praying for him at one moment, at one instance, in due time, my time came and anyway, everyone's time will come. But now the Word of God is talking about people that are reborn, people that have received the Spirit of God, people that are repenting and renouncing, people that have dressed off the body of their sins and have taken the spiritual circumcision of God. And they knelt down and prayed and God gave him the Spirit of His. Do you now understand what the Spirit of God means to be given unto you? Now God comes along and lives in you. And now you become the temple of God. And you are not taught by people anymore. But you are now taught by Jesus Christ. Because now, because of your confirmation and your declaration, Jesus Christ is becoming your, taught, your teacher and your master. And now He's teaching you and He's leading you. And He's guiding you and revealing to you the whole truth. And if you take the steadfast decision as well to serve the work of God, a very important decision. There's the person that is coming to the church and there's also the person that has taken the decision that, uh, to, to serve in the church. I, and I will do what I can. But I will serve God and my brothers. And when I first came into the church, we had the appetite to work, me and my wife. And we entered the church, and my wife Anna asked away, what should I do? In what, uh, in what place should I be working? And uh, an elder sister, uh, w in wisdom, she said, you are supposed to do what you can. Do what you can, as long as you want to. Serve the brothers and the Lord. And Anna studied from what she could. She knew how to wash dishes, and she knew how to mop, and she knew how to uh, do the chores of the church. That is what she was doing in our house. But they have told us, and we have understood, that we have two houses now. Our house, our family house, household, that is in that place, in that address, and after the day finishes, we are gathered in that place and we sleep, we pray, we are studying, and we wake up in the morning and we go to our workplaces. But there's also a spiritual place which is greater, much greater indeed. In our spiritual house, is greater than a household, the, 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 the address that we have here on earth. We all need to work. And what are you supposed to do? Whatever you can. Whatever you are able to do in your house, do it here. Help out. And the Word of God also says that anyone who wants to be great, he has to be a servant of all first. And anyone who wants to be first, let him be last. 
but I'm coming back to what we've just read and it's very important that knowledge puffs up makes the person boast only love builds up and through love you'll be able to edify yourself through uh, Jesus Christ of course and his love but the critical point now is how are you supposed to receive that knowledge attain it and Apostle Paul says and prays rather uh, to the church of the Ephesians and says something that is very important indeed he says I'm praying so that God may provide you Jesus Christ may give you the father of all glory a spirit of wisdom and understanding uh, revelation to know God therefore it is expedient for us it is necessary for us to pray so that God may illuminate in us why because we all have the spirit but the spirit we have has to uh, is actually moving towards disaster towards destruction and to, to, towards envy and jealousy but the word of God says something else that the person has the spirit but the illumination of the Almighty is making wise and how is that illumination reaching us reaching the person and he's giving you wisdom and understanding from the fathers up above from the father rather up above there's only one way by asking by seeking a spirit of wisdom and understanding you won't receive anything unless you seek it out unless you search for it but we should never forget that you should first ask for the kingdom of God the presence of the Spirit and the righteousness of his and then all other things God will add to you and to upon the base and the foundation that is the kingdom of God and his righteousness you have been given and he says this very nicely our Lord Jesus Christ confirms that you uh, fathers and mothers since you are people, carnal people, if your child asks for bread, you will give him rock. If he asks for a fish, we will give him uh, a snake. Your heavenly father, if you ask, won't he give you nice things? Won't he give you the Spirit of God? What is he not going to give you? Because he says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be open to you. The road is open, therefore. And he's waiting for you to kneel down and pray and ask. But firstly, you need to ask for the kingdom of God so that he may be able to, you may be able to receive the righteousness of God and then you may be able to receive from God. But upon that foundation, that is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But now, we have to discern things here. We have to differentiate things. Knowledge is the gift from God to the people that are that have rather taken the steadfast decision to serve God to serve the house of God the living God and to serve their brothers and sisters a steadfast decision indeed an immovable one to these people God now is bringing down a special kind of grace and he's making them stewards general managers if you would like of all the revelations of all the mysteries of God is there a person that knows all the mysteries of God of course and who's that person a person that all in all his life all his right or his life rather he has given towards working for God for Christ and him crucified working for the house of the living God serving the body of Jesus Christ serving and continue on serving Ser servant of all and if he becomes a servant of all what is this the the one who's serving and the servant the one who serves I would say that he's doing it because he wants to but a servant now is subdued he has no opinion of his own and as we are set free from sin we became servants of God then 
our fruition will be towards holiness uh, and sanctification and our end eternal life. There's a servant, there's someone who serves, who can say yes and no, but there, there's a servant as well. A, someone who's working for someone else, an employee, you can say that yes, I'm, I'm, um, I'm out if you don't like something. But we are talking about a, a servant. We're talking about someone who has subdued himself. He has no opinion of his own. He cannot say yes or no. He has no right, let's say, to be set free because I have taken the decision to subdue myself to God. He's doing nothing without asking God. He is doing nothing without asking what the Lord is pleased with and what He is commanding him to do. And someone could have taken a decision indeed, a very important decision, so that his life may be in the serving of God. Won't he work? Yes, he will. Because Apostle Paul says he was a servant the first of all, of course, but he was also working because he wanted to be free of all. He didn't want to be, um, to be in need of the money of anyone else. And he says that I brought myself as a servant to all brothers so that I may win most of you, if not all. Therefore, who is the person that actually has full knowledge of the Word of God? Is the person that is a servant. To that person, God is indeed revealing all things. But knowledge puffs up. There's a balance that needs to be uh, given. Why? Because the Word of God says that you need to study this and remain to this. And then your progress will be clear to all peoples. But be careful though. Be careful of yourself. Do not boast and puff up and say that I'm doing all these things and there's no one else like me. Be careful of the gospel. Let not the, the one who is accusing God, the, the enemy of us all, drive you away because of the doctrine, of false doctrines. Because we need to understand around all of us, there's a lion that is the enemy, that is circling around trying to find anyone, any place to enter and devour even the chosen people of God. And that is why Jesus Christ says, you need to be awake, aware and in prayer, so that you may not enter temptation. You need to be awake, aware, and praying so that you may not enter temptation. Why? Because the enemy of our soul is walking around, circling us. And he has ways and means that you cannot understand or comprehend. And when the person, therefore, receives, attains that knowledge from God, from now onwards, from then onwards, there's danger. How are we supposed, therefore, to fight off that danger of puffing up, of boasting? There's only one secret. Love. But, how am I supposed to love? It is easy for me to say to you that I love you. I love you. I can say that many times. I remember uh, the... Uh, brother Sotir is the son of Brother Duca, uh, and he was young and I went to him and I said I embraced him and I said I love you do you know that and he replied but do you pray for me I've never prayed for him before and I was ashamed I went away and I said to myself that I'm just speaking words can therefore the love that I'm saying and I am boasting about be nothing. Yes. That is why the Word of God says, do not love with tongue and words. Can I indeed just love with tongue and words? Yes. I can love you all. I can say that from up here. I love you all. But I need to love you with actions, deeds, and truth. But that love is from the Father up above, coming down to us from the Father of lights. Because it is a good deed and a great gift from God. And how am I supposed to receive that love? By asking? No. That is not through asking or seeking out. That is given through a great mystery. Only. And God confirms it. 
Man is weak. The man is weak. The person. We all. And when we are weak, I am weak to love my enemy. I love my brother, but I cannot love my enemy. Not just Christ loved me. I cannot love my wife just as Christ loved me and gave himself up. Or my nephew, or my grandchild, my grandchildren, my own children. That is not possible because Christ gave himself up and was sacrificed for me. Because he left his glory and came down and became cursed for me. Am I supposed to leave anything from my grandchild and become sacrifice, sacrificed for it? Or for my wife? No. Become a curse? And now the word of God comes along and says, let me tell you a great secret. The love of God, the Father God, who is the unique love. And why is it unique? Because only God is love. Is love, not has. Is love. The love of God will come and fill your heart, flood your heart, so that you may love with the love of God. Only through the Spirit, though. And when in Zechariah, he showed that uh, unique lampstand that is the church that was golden made to perfection filled with oil that is the spirit of God that was able to bring light and he's asking Zechariah what, what is this and Zechariah wasn't able to reply I've never seen that before what is it I've never seen such a lampstand I've never seen it before. Please explain to me, Lord. We don't, and that was love. We never saw that before. We never seen it before. This is not through power or strength or might. Only through the spirit of mine, says the Lord Almighty. Only through the spirit of God. You need to fill yourself up with the spirit of God. Understand what you're doing. Go into your praying corner, that is. And in your praying corner, we're not just entering just for fun or for a little while and we depart. We are entering a praying corner with a specific way through, uh, with specific steps. And we first confirm our sins so that we may be forgiven. And then we forgive others so that we may find the grace of God. I'm just going through ver them very quickly. Then we praise God. We exalt God so that our mindset may be cleared. We thank God so that our heart may be cleared and cleansed. And then firstly we ask for the kingdom of God and the righteousness of His. And then right after that we enter into the presence of God. And we start bringing our petitions, our important petitions. Please Lord, make me your servant, a servant of Christ. And help me out so that I may be a servant of Christ so that we may speak face to face, a, a friend of Christ rather. Because Christ himself says that I'm not calling you servants anymore. I'm calling you friends. Only if you do what I'm commanding to you. And not to you as a whole, but you personally. Then you will be made a friend of Christ. And the more you are bringing yourself closer to Christ, so that you may listen to what Christ has to say for you and to you, the one who has my commandments and keeps them, he is the one that loves me. And I will love him and my father will love him. And into him, to him rather, I will reveal myself. The more powerful, the more uniquely, rather, the more you're giving yourself up to Christ and you seek out for the commandments of God and you seek out to do them as well. You want to do them. God will transform you. But pay attention to it, to a friend, to a trustworthy friend. Because there's a friend that is not trustworthy. He's looking for his own possessions and things and benefits. But God, Christ, doesn't want me to be such a friend. He wants me to be a friend, a true friend. Apostle Paul says that Timothy is uh, like, uh, like me in, in mind and in spirit. Because he's not asking for his own things, but he's asking for the Lord's things. That is the friend that Christ wants you to be, a trustworthy one, 
not to ask for your own blessing, but for the glory of God in your life. Do you thank God? And then, the person then is then, uh, is then transformed into a true servant of God, a friend of Christ. A friend that is not only knowing the truth, he is walking in truth. How? Through the Spirit of God. As the Spirit of God is filling up his heart with the love of God. And from that moment onwards, the first and most and most important benefit is that God knows you. In verse 3 he says, But the man who loves God is known by God. Corinthians 1st chapter 8 and verse 3 as we read before. Remember, the door, they were knocking the door, but the door was closed. And they were asking themselves, Why are you not opening up? Because we prophesied in your name. We made great miracles in your name and we even casted out demons in your name. But Christ says, what? Depart from me, the ones that are working in iniquity. I never knew you. Never. Why? Because the one who loves Christ, God, he is known by God. Don't you love God? If you don't, then he doesn't know you. You are a friend, but a trustworthy friend, because now God knows you. And what are the characteristics of these trustworthy friends? Is humility. Not me, but Christ. There are many other characteristics. But humble yourselves underneath the mighty hand of God, and then God will lift you up in due time. I could say from that moment onwards, many from that... from. From, that character, from this characteristic onward, many different characteristics, but what is important? That first one is the important uh, characteristic, that is the humility of God, a broken heart, so that God may live in you. Because God is living and is dwelling with the humble in the, the, person, in the person's heart that is humble and broken. And the second characteristic, of course, is that we are trembling in the Word of God. We are trembling for the truth. But we are trembling the word of God, not with boasting, but we know, God, I know that I cannot do what you are asking me to do. You're commanding. But with your help, I can. But I need your help to do it. Because I have love. I have an open mind. I have a clean heart. I'm praising God. I'm thanking God. And now God comes along. And He's intervening in my life with revelation and he's placing me back and he's leading me again and he's making me again a steward and a manager let's say of his multifaceted grace of god whatever god is doing in your life it will be not because you um because you are worthy of it there's a great variety let's say in the grace of god the the variety of God's grace in your life will be great. And we do thank God for it. And that is why the first benefit that the person has when he or she is truly walking by the, by the love, he's seeking out for love and he's walking by the love, and he's being baptized by the Spirit and his heart is filled with the love of God. The first thing that he will do is to, fi to love God and, understand, and be known by God as a servant of God and a friend of Christ. Do you now understand, the brethren, what it means for, for Christ to go to the throne of God? Because we make mistakes, many. We are faulty in many ways and many things. But imagine now, the one who is your defender. You go into the throne of God and saying, Please, Father, forgive him, because he's my friend. Can you comprehend that? Can you imagine that? He's my friend. Forgive him. Do not take that under consideration, his mistake. And God, he would reply, Amen, Amen to that. 
What kind of a blessed life would you live? Revelations that you would have, the walking that you'd be having. Whatever you be, you be asking for, God would reply. Whatever you seek and want and need, God will give. But is that for special people? No. This is for all of us. God is not pa showing partiality. That is why the Word of God confirms it. Be careful. The knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. With knowledge, of course. But it needs to be together with the love of God that is poured down into our hearts through the Spirit of God. And of course, now uh, he continues on with the eating food of sacrifice, of food sacrifice to idols. There's no point in that, but something that we need to pay attention to. Underneath that circumstance, when you have knowledge and love, you have authority over all things, but they're not all of them, they're not positive for you, they will not be, good, be for the good of you. I have authority over all, but I will not be uh, slaves, enslaved by any of them. But how is it possible for me to have authority over all this? But for all, of, for all things to not have a positive result for me. Be careful, says the Word of God. You know what the truth is. You know you have the love of God in your heart. Be careful though. So that you may not bring any scandals to the list of your brothers. You may not scandalize any of your brothers. The answer is, and you can do it very easily. Whatever you do, you are supposed to do it with great intention. I love my brother, I know the truth, and I know that the eating food sacrifice to idols are nothing. And if I'm invited to a table and you, they have in, uh, food in front of me that are um, not proper, let's say, for some, uh, I will eat because there's nothing wrong with that for me. There's no conscious, I'm not conscious stricken because of them, but the Word of God says no. Because if you do eat food sacrificed to idols, if you do Im eat improper food and someone else sees you, he will say that uh, he's a blessed man of God and he's eating these things, I will eat them as well. But he is weak in consciousness and he will not be eating through faith. He's doing it because he saw you eating it. He sees you and he says, it's okay then. He imitates you. He says, it's okay for me to do it as well. But he will be conscious stricken. And that will be a scandal for him then. If your brother is scandalized because he saw you eating and then he ate himself. He, Apostle Paul says, I will never eat meat again. Because if I scandalize him, all the blessings of God that may come down on me. But it will be greater for me, for me to, to tie a stone around my neck and throw myself into the sea. It will be greater for me to do that rather than scandalize the least of my brethren. Therefore, you understand now how important it is what my, uh, action, or my our actions are. That is why we have taken the steadfast decision to have the truth of the first apostolic church, to keep it, not to add, not to retrieve. If it is written in the Word of God, it is the truth. If, it does, if it's not written, we're not doing it. To do, to follow the practicality of the First Apostolic Church. What was the First Apostolic Church doing? Every Sunday, they were eating and drinking the blood and body of Christ. They were partaking in the communion of the body and blood of Christ. This is what we're supposed to do. They were staying into the teaching of the apostles, the cutting of the bread. And the, the presence of the brethren, the masses, and the prayers. The, the Christian is not someone who comes by and goes. And the church is not something that will be here, but tomorrow won't. I'm staying here, I'm living here. And will be here forever. This is our secret. And therefore, the uh, reality is, whatever they said, we are saying. Whatever the first apostolic judge was doing, we are doing. But the way, same way they were acting, we are supposed to act as well. And how were they acting? Pay attention, the Word of God says. Be simple, like the doves, and quiet and wise, like the, the snakes. Because I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolf, or wolves. 
you are a sheep that has been sent out by a guy in the midst of wolves. Do not be afraid though, because they're not going to eat you up. They cannot even touch you. The enemy cannot touch you because the good shepherd is there close to you. And he's able to destroy the head of the enemy. Do not be afraid, but be careful though. To not bring any scandals to the small the smallest of sheep of the smallest the smallest of sheep. You may be a big sheep. God made you and uh, like that. But what about the smallest of sheep? What are you supposed to do with that? With your brother. You're supposed to love it. You're supposed to love your brother and confirm your love by serving that small sheep by taking care of that small sheep your brother and sister and you are supposed to do it with all your heart brothers and sisters are telling me you see the uh, the fires crisis coming yes the climate crisis now it is amazing now beyond any understanding floods fires but there's one thing that is most important that God will end everything and that is homosexuality this is where God is ending all things is the only thing that God will not uh, accept and we're not accepting as well there are men that are acting like women but and there are uh, homosexuals there are women that uh, have abandoned the proper way the acceptable way and homosexuality is the worst remember Sodom and Gomorrah there's complete destruction there because of it and because before Noah the same thing happened and complete destruction came it's the point that the love of God cannot reach out from God cannot uh, accept it we're not supposed to play around with these things God can set such a person free, yes. But now, the way uh, things are right now, seven or eight years of, co of, of age, and they are asking him, are you a girl or a boy? You're going to tell us. And it is amazing, isn't it? These things were not happening in the past. When I was young, in Marusi, when I, where I grew up, there was no such thing. I remember only one couple and when they were moving around we would uh, we would have fun and we would uh, run around them and when we will ho they will hold hands there's just one couple now in Marusi now you enter into the stores especially the stores that are uh, serving the, the selling uh, clothes uh, clothes and they are used as sellers they're the best sellers let's say of, of clothes stay away from that scene stay away as far as you can there's nothing worse because the Christ the judgment of God enters there and now imagine that sin if a, a, for a person of God to be doing it for a person of God to be accustomed with it a person of God who's, who speaks the name of God who is reborn who is transformed and baptized but I've seen this. I'm not saying this because I have imagined it. I'm imagining it. It's not common, but as we move forward, it will become uh, more common. As we move forward, sorry, it will be more common and more common. Be careful of yourselves. Be careful of your brothers and households and sisters and your children. Be careful. Awake, aware, and praying. But what is the message and what are you saying now? But I'm taking that as I'm, I'm taking now the uh, the opportunity because of the fires, a great danger. What is happening now in Greece is uh, we haven't imagined it. What about Canada? In Australia, we've seen it before. In northern of Europe, drought. The rivers are drying. May God protect us. Of course. These are the pains of the woman in labor, as the Word of God confirms.
the pains of the last days. But what? God cannot withstand, and stand uh, uh, in general is homosexuality. And why am I bringing this in now? Why? Because we, when in homosexuality, there's the meaning, let's say, of love. I'm loving that guy. I, I am in love with him. But that woman loves the other woman. No, that's not the love of the Father. It's not, it is that love that is carnal, as the Word of God says, and demonic. May God protect us. That is why we're supposed to know the truth, but also we need to pay attention to the love that builds up. That the love that is from God. The love that is coming down from the Father of lights. The love that is coming from the heart of God and is poured down into ours. My, I'm into the name of God. And God is coming. And I'm going to conclude with this. Pay attention, be awake, be aware and pray. So that you may not enter temptation. Each and every one of us personally and all of us together. Amen. I